Hi guys, it's Kat. Today, I'm going to show you how I built these miniature kitchen cabinets. They're fully functional with drawers and doors that open and close. It even has a Lazy Susan turntable in the corner cabinet. Paired with my marble countertop and working sink from a previous tutorial, this kitchen has everything a miniature house needs. It's fully customizable from the colors down to the accessories so you can truly design your dream kitchen. Let's get started. I'll be using these wood slats by Lowell Cornell for the main structure of the cabinets. They're 2 and 3 quarters of an inch in width so they're already the perfect height for cabinets. I cut two pieces off at the 1 and 3 quarters of an inch mark. I simply mark 1 and 3 quarters of an inch, draw a straight line, and cut the wood on both sides with a utility knife. The wood is soft enough that it just snaps off. Sand all the pieces for a tidy finish. Glue both of these pieces onto the remaining longer one. One at the edge and the other one two and a quarter inches away from it. As that dries, cut three more pieces. Four inches, three and one eighth, and one and one eighth. Glue them together to form this bracket shape. Cut another 1 and 3 quarters of an inch piece and glue it to the left side. This structure is our corner cabinet. Let's put these two structures together. We'll be using quarter inch thick square dowels for that. Cut two lengths that are 3 and a quarter inches long. Use these at the bottom between the two structures to attach them together. Cut out two 2 and a quarter inch sections and add them to the bottom and top of the drawer area. Add a few more dowels to finish the main shell. Now let's make some doors. I take two super jumbo craft sticks and glue them together. From this wider piece, cut off the rounded end and cut off a three and a quarter inch length. Draw a line down the center to divide it into two doors. Score it on both sides. This is optional, but I added some wood filler to fill in any grooves. It just makes for a neater finished product. I use some wooden coffee stirrers for some decorative trim on the doors. You can skip this step if you like a more sleek modern look. I snap the wood to divide it into two doors and then tape it back together to make for easier assembly. Slide it into the center cabinet and drill holes on the top and bottom sides of the doors. These will be our hinges that allow the doors to open and close. Make sure the holes reach through the doors. Grab some 20 gauge wire and stick them into the holes. Snip off the excess wire. From another craft stick, cut out a 3 and a quarter inch length and glue it right above the cabinet doors. Add some trim. On the left side of the doors are the drawers. We'll have three drawers, so cut out two lengths of square dowel that are 2 and a quarter inches long. Glue them in place, spacing them half an inch to 3 quarters of an inch apart. The spacing depends on how high or low you want your drawers to be. While that dries, let's make another door for the corner cabinet. Grab some giant craft sticks and glue them together lengthwise. Cut two 1 and 3 quarters of an inch lengths for the two doors. Add trim to each one. These will go into the corner area as a bifold door. To assemble them, position them at a 90 degree angle and use mini hinges to attach them together. This is optional, but 
but I cut grooves into the doors for a cleaner look. As the glue, I'm using JB Well Metal Epoxy because it works so well for metal parts. Simply mix equal parts of black and white and use it just like glue. It takes about 12 hours to fully cure. Once it's cured, these hinges aren't going anywhere. Now slip this bifold door into place. And drill a hole on the right side for a wire hinge. Drill the hole, add the wire, and snip off the excess. This big compartment will have a rotating turntable. We'll make that in just a bit, but first, let's make the drawers. From a combined craft stick, cut out a 1 and 7 eighths of an inch by 1 and 3 quarters of an inch rectangle. This is the drawer base. From a jumbo craft stick, cut out two lengths that are 1 and 3 quarters of an inch each. These will be the drawer sides. Lastly, cut out a 1 and 7 eighths of an inch length for the drawer back. In order for these drawers to slide in and out smoothly, I'll be 3D printing some drawer rails. In Tinkercad, I drop down a cube, stretch it out to a long rectangle, and cut out a rectangular slot in the middle lengthwise. They make a thinner rectangle that fits perfectly into that slot. Shrink them down to one and a half inches in length and print it out. As much as I love handcrafting minis, there is a level of precision and repeatability with 3D printing that I simply adore. To be able to copy and paste and then get replicas of a design I created is amazing. You can make them from matchsticks following my dorm desk tutorial. Once it's printed, you can see how these rails will work. The outer rail will be glued inside a cabinet, and the inner rail will be glued to the drawer. Copy and paste to make six of these sets. I glue the thin inner rail to the side of the drawer with JB Weld. Once it's cured, place the outer rail on it and position it inside a cabinet. More guidelines and then glue the outer rails in place. Once those are cured, your drawer is almost done. For the drawer front, cut out two two and a quarter inch lengths and combine them for thickness. Add trim along all the sides. With the drawer already in place, I wood glue and position the drawer front on top. This method of adding the drawer front on last ensures a really clean finish. I showed you guys how to make this marble countertop with a working sink in my previous video. Simply add wood glue and position the countertop in place. Pour on epoxy resin for a high shine and waterproof finish.
Let's paint this beauty. You can do this before adding on the countertop to avoid having to tape off the counter. I asked you guys on Instagram what color I should paint this cabinet and was so torn between gray and blue. Many of you suggested cutting it down the middle and mixing the two colors. I love that idea and did exactly that. You can paint this cabinet with a brush, but just like in real life, nothing beats a spray-on paint job. I thin out some acrylic paint and pour it into my compact airbrush. After a base coat of white, a few coats of the color, and it's perfect. Peeling the tape off to reveal how the counter and the cabinets look together is so satisfying. I attached the faucet I showed you how to make in my previous video. I use a toothpick to hold it in place as the JB Well Cures. Now it's time for handles. I designed these super simple ones, but you can also use a matchstick like I've done many times before. They're just simple long rectangles. I print them and spray paint them in gold. I use JB Well to adhere them to the doors and drawers. It creates a super strong bond even with plastic and wood. I follow the same steps to create the small side cabinet. Almost done guys! Let's finish the corner cabinet with a turntable inside. The first thing I need to do is add shelves. I just measure and cut pieces of craft sticks to fit. We need one center shelf and one at the bottom. These shelves will hold the rotating turntables. For the turntables themselves, you can handcraft them with wood or anything else you like. I'm going to 3D model them because it's so simple and I need more than one. I just drop a cylinder on the workspace and shorten it. Then add a gray cylinder in the center and lift it up a bit. The gray shapes will cut away the orange. This leaves a lip around the perimeter. Use a gray square to cut away a quarter of the circle. Then make a hole in the center. We need two of these. To attach them inside the cabinet so they can spin, I'll be using a round dowel. Cut a quarter inch length and place it inside the hole. Tape it down so it holds the dowel in place. I wood glue to the dowel and place it inside the cabinet. Once the glue dries, you can remove the tape. The dowel will be attached but the turntable is free to spin. I chose to print these again in white for a cleaner look. They spin so well and will be great for holding mini pots or pans or food items. That's it guys. These cabinets are all done. I love how this turned out and I'm so excited to build out the rest of the kitchen with an island, upper cabinet, a fridge, and so much more. I'll show you how I made this range and dishwasher in my next video. I hope you guys liked this tutorial. Give it a thumbs up if you did and make sure to subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. Bye!